What's up, YouTube? My name is Clickwid, and I am back again today bringing you guys another fantasy football preview prior to the 2014 season kickoff. And guys, we are talking today about the quarterback position, and specifically what we're going to be talking about is sleepers at the quarterback position. Now, before we go any further, I want to explain what sleepers are for those of you who are unaware. So these are players that are falling down lower than I believe they should on draft boards. A lot of these players are going to be players that go undrafted in fantasy football leagues, or maybe just very far at the end of a lot of drafts. So what we're trying to do here is get the best value that we can with our late round picks because fantasy football is a lot tougher when you are only drafting with your first six, seven picks and then your last picks are a bunch of throwaways. So what I'm trying to do with this series is give you some information to help you make better picks in the later rounds of your draft. And I think these players that are on your screen right now will help you do that. Now, again, before we go any further, I want to explain one other thing here. And that is that I believe the quarterback position is probably the deepest position for fantasy football this year. Now, what that basically means is that, yes, there are players like Aaron Rodgers, like Drew Brees, uh, Matt Stafford, that level of quarterback, and then, of course, you've got Peyton Manning on his own tier. Um, but those are the type of players who are considered to be very, very elite at their position. Matt Stafford's kind of on the borderline. He just throws a lot of passes, and he throws to Calvin Johnson, so that certainly helps him. But the other, the other guys are, you know, consistently elite fantasy quarterbacks, and that's, of course, something that you can't overlook. However, just about everybody else in all of fantasy football is fairly inconsistent when it comes to fantasy rankings at the quarterback position. Now, what that means to me is that although there are guys that are, you know, consistently showing up in the top 10, they might be anywhere from 10th to 4th in the rankings. There's a lot of fluidity there. There's a lot of, of uh, guys who kind of are right close to each other in points is basically what I'm getting at. And I think that that's something that we really have to look at when we're talking about the every single position, but especially at quarterback, because it's, it's very, very common there. Now, what that essentially means is that, yes, there are going to be quarterbacks who score more points than others. And that's, you know, at the end of the year, they'll be ranked, you know, one through 32 or whatever, you know, however many quarterbacks end up starting games. But at a certain point, what you're looking for is a week-to-week -week point differential. And in my opinion, there are a big chunk of guys who all fall into a very, very close point differential. And that's pretty much everybody from the rank of about 5th at quarterback to about 13th, 14th, 15th, somewhere in that range. And all of those guys, in my opinion, could score very, very close to one another. So... That's why we want to, if we're not getting one of those elite quarterbacks, we don't necessarily want to sit and try to reach for one of the higher end guys, uh, the guys that are ranked 5th, 6th, 7th, because you're probably not going to get a whole lot more production out of those guys than you would somebody that you take very late in your draft as like the 10th, 11th, 12th quarterback off the board. So... That's kind of a quick overview, guys. Now, I want to get into the actual players that we have on this list, and there are three of them. Three of them that are, are fairly well known in the fantasy football community, and all guys who have been ranked higher than this in the past. So, starting at number three, and this is a guy who is positional ranked ADP is 15th. And what that means is that he's the 15th quarterback that's going off of the board. Now, again, these players are ranked just like they were in the previous sleepers video at the running back position. They're ranked by their average draft position. This is not necessarily the order that I like them in, um, but it's just there to kind of give you an idea of when you need to draft them. You'll get an idea of how I feel about these guys uh, as I talk about them. But at number three, like I said, we've got Jay Cutler of the Chicago Bears. Now, Jay Cutler, this past season, did not make it through the entire year. And that led the way for a backup quarterback named Josh McCown to step in and perform at a very, very high level. He threw a ton of touchdown passes to Brandon Marshall, and Alshon Jeffrey broke out well. Uh, Josh McCown was the quarterback, really. But the thing is... Jay Cutler was still performing at a very high level for the fantasy, uh, for at least for fantasy purposes. And that's something that we really should not overlook because, like I said, although Cutler missed some time, when he was in, he was performing at a very, very high level. Granted, 
McCown had a little bit higher points per game, I believe. But at the same time, though, these guys were both performing very highly. Now, if you actually look at the stats that Jay Cutler accumulated and the stats that Josh McCown accumulated, and if you combined them into one quarterback, so, you know, a 16-game season like the Bears had between the two of them, they would have actually been a top five fantasy quarterback this past season. Not a lot of people know that. Yeah, Jay Cutler and Josh McCown together scored more points than just about every other fantasy quarterback other than the very, very elite guys. So, do not overlook that. These guys are going to perform in this Chicago Bears offense. Mark Tressman has set it up. He knows what he's doing. He is getting a tremendous amount out of all of his players in the offense, specifically Matt Forte, the receivers, and uh, Martellus Bennett. All four of those guys are beasting out in this offense, and Jay Cutler is going to benefit greatly from it as well. If he can stay healthy this year, I like him to be a top 10 quarterback, and I actually like him to be higher than that. I would not be surprised if Jay Cutler is flirting with another top five quarterback spot because all that it comes down to is opportunities. And Matt Forte is going to run the ball effectively, and Jay Cutler, all he has to do is not turn the ball over. Granted, I understand that's been something that's been a problem throughout his career, but Jay Cutler has the skills, and he's got the weapons, and he's somebody that I am absolutely targeting. If I do not end up with one of the top four or five fantasy quarterbacks, Jay Cutler is my guy that I am targeting late at the end of drafts. And if you're somebody who drafts a quarterback that's a little bit more injury prone, say your first quarterback is Robert Griffin III, for example, maybe you want to try and give Jay Cutler or one of these other guys on this list a shot, because if if uh, RG3 does go down, you're going to want to have a premier backup, and it might end up that Jay Cutler or one of these guys actually outperforms your starter as well, and then you've got a, a good situation on your hands where you could potentially trade somebody. But let's move on now to number two, and we have the quarterback of my Dallas Cowboys, Tony Romo. Tony Romo quietly had an excellent fantasy season this past year. Yes, he missed week 16, or week 17, excuse me, his 16th game uh, with an injury, a back injury that did cost him the rest of the season. It did cost the Cowboys the season, but we have to remember that prior to that game, Tony Romo had thrown 31 touchdowns with only 10 interceptions, one of his best seasons ever, arguably his best season ever as a quarterback. And that isn't that surprising because the Dallas Cowboys offense is finally coming into their own. DeMarco Murray was able to stay, stay at least mostly healthy throughout the year. He didn't miss a ton of time. He did miss a couple of games. But for the most part, Murray stayed healthy, which meant that the running game was on point. They were getting production out of that position. And Tony Romo was able to attack defenses deep with Terrence Williams, who actually looked very, very good in his rookie season. Jason Witten, of course, one of the most reliable targets in the entire league. And then, of course, Des Bryant, absolutely an elite wide receiver, arguably the number two wide receiver in all of football right now, and Tony Romo's throwing him the ball. So this is a great offense. The reason that I really like Tony Romo this year, though, is that I believe Dallas is going to be one of the worst defenses in the entire league, possibly in the history of the league. And that usually means that the, the opposing team, in this case, the Cowboys themselves, they are going to have to throw the ball a ton to keep up with opposing teams' offenses. So I expect Tony Romo to throw the ball well over 600 times this year. He could even approach 700 attempts this year if he stays healthy, which is a huge number. And if he gets to anywhere near that, there is no question that he is going to be a top 10 fantasy quarterback. Now, Romo gets a lot of hate in the media for throwing too many interceptions, just like Jay Cutler. The difference is that Tony Romo really doesn't throw that many interceptions. That's a false, false, false claim. It's really, really not true. The, the reality is that Tony Romo throws over 2-1 to one on touchdowns to interception ratio, and that is something that not many quarterbacks can say. He is impressive throwing touchdowns. He gets a ton of yards. He would have crushed 4,000 yards for the third straight season if he had stayed healthy last year. And that is something that we should definitely uh, look at. I think Romo is definitely a possibility as a top 10 fantasy quarterback once again this season. Next on the list is Matt Ryan of the Atlanta Falcons, and he is currently going off the board as the 12th quarterback off the board. Now, Matt Ryan is somebody who did play all of last year, unlike Romo and Cutler, but he did not have the weapons that we have come to expect him to have. And that is something that definitely did not 
benefit him because Matt Ryan had one of the toughest years that we have seen him have in terms of, you know, throwing interceptions, for example. And also, it was his lowest touchdown total since his second year in the league back in 2009. Matt Ryan threw 26 touchdowns, but uh, like I said, a career high of 17 interceptions. Now, he did throw for 4,500 yards, which marked the third straight season that he cracked 4,000 yards. However, he took 651 attempts to get there, which is 40 times more almost than the than any other year that he has thrown the ball. So his numbers overall were down last year, but like I said, I think that a lot of that came from the fact that Roddy White was unhealthy throughout most of the year. He tried to play through as many injuries as he could, but Roddy was very clearly hurt, and Julio Jones missed a big chunk of the season. Prior to Julio Jones getting injured, Man, he was on pace for a monster year. He was the number one fantasy wide receiver until he got hurt. So that just goes to show you just how important Julio Jones could have been in this Atlanta Falcons offense. Now, the other thing that we should keep in mind and something that I actually kind of like for this Atlanta offense is that it sounds like based on reports anyway, that Roddy White is actually going to take the role of Tony Gonzalez, the role that Gonzalez left when he retired this offseason, or, you know, I guess he hasn't officially retired. I don't know what the deal is with that. Bottom line, he's not on that Atlanta Falcons anymore. But apparently, Roddy White has been practicing in the slot, which is where Tony Gonzalez played a lot. Now, he's not going to line up at tight end, and he's not going to be blocking and things like that. But Roddy White is going to be going out for a ton of passes, and at this point in their careers, Roddy White might be a better receiver than Tony Gonzalez was. So I think that that is definitely an, an increase uh, for Matt Ryan. The other thing is that Harry Douglas actually looked pretty good last year. Uh, he, like I said, he was playing in an offense that was depleted on a bad team, and they had to throw the ball a lot, but Harry Douglas performed. He performed a lot better than anybody expected him to anyway, and that makes him at least a viable wide receiver three in this offense. So we've got Julio Jones, who is an absolute rock star, elite number one wide receiver. Roddy White, who would be a number one wide receiver on many teams, even at this point in his career, but is still an absolutely excellent wide receiver two. And then Harry Douglas, again, who has uh, the potential to have big games from time to time, and he's just got that vertical threat. He is a, a, a skilled player who can definitely draw defenses away from the other two in this offense uh, and give Matt Ryan another option to throw the ball to as well. So like I said, I really do like these all three of these quarterbacks here and especially where they're going. All three of them are not going uh, currently in terms of uh, starting quarterback position in a 10-team league. Now, granted, if you're in a 12-team league, technically Matt Ryan is going off the board at number 12, which would make him the last starter drafted. But even still... I love that value for Matt Ryan. Uh, if I have to have him as the last quarterback that gets drafted, I think that that's a great option. Tony Romo at 13, and then, of course, Jay Cutler at 15. All of them are tremendous values. I really do think that they are players everyone should be targeting toward the end of their drafts, like I said, if you don't get one of the elite guys. And quite frankly, unless you get Peyton Manning or Drew Brees, in my opinion, it's not worth it to go anywhere other than uh, like third round to, or if you get Aaron Rodgers or Matt Stafford, let's say in the third, fourth round, I like that value, but I do not like anything other than that out of the quarterback position this year. It seems to me that there is a hell of a lot of uh, meh players, just guys who don't really impress me. And that's why I like to look deeper down at the quarterback position, because if they're going to be guys that aren't going to be impressive anyway, we might as well not spend a high round pick on it. Guys who, if if Tony Romo scores 15 points less than, let's say, um, uh, Matt Stafford in your fantasy league this year, and you're drafting Matt Stafford in the third, fourth round, and I get Tony Romo in the 13th round, I am killing you right there. Yes, you outscored me with your quarterback. Good for you. However, I well, you were drafting Matt Stafford in the fourth round, I was drafting a starting running back or a starting wide receiver. And that is a huge advantage for me. That is something that I think a lot of people overlook. They try to draft the quarterbacks high just because they know, yeah, quarterbacks typically are the highest scoring position on your team. Do not overdraft them though, guys. Look for value. Always be looking for value. If you can get a guy who is just as good as the guy going off the board or very close to as good as the guy going off the board at, at the current pick, if you can get him two to three rounds later or even later than that in the case of Tony Romo, Matt, uh, Matt Ryan, and Jay Cutler, 
I would definitely wait on those guys. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, make sure to drop a comment below. And again, guys, if you are if you're looking for any sort of fantasy advice or anything like that, anything I can help you with, make sure you leave a comment below and I will do my best to answer those things for you. Thank you guys for tuning in. I like I said, I hope you learned something. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you press the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I am planning on having some fantasy football content throughout the season, but we're still of course going to be focused primarily on math. Madden and other video games, but again, Madden is the primary focus. So thank you guys again. I do appreciate it, and I will talk to you beautiful bitches again soon.